Hi, welcome to this video. Um, I'm going to be talking about EBNF and railroad diagrams. Um, please let me know if you find the videos helpful um, and I'll keep making them. They're something that I've been trying to do in a few of my other classes and I thought they might be useful here as well. Um, so hopefully this helps you understand the concepts. Okay, so both EBNF and railroad, railroad diagrams are forms of meta-languages. Um, that just means that they are something which describes the syntax of a programming language. Um, obviously, they're very important. Um, you may not use them day to day, um, but they're also something that's still very useful to know, and they're part of our syllabus, so we need to look at them. So this is an example of what a railroad diagram looks like. Um, and Think of it, its name is a railroad diagram, and it's just like you would have a railroad for a train. Your train goes along the railway in one direction, and then say a track splits, the train can then keep going like that. So the train could go up one path or it could go up the other. Um, it's not going to go there and then come back. Um, it has to just keep flowing in one direction, sort of thing like this. So you could have a railroad like this. So this is a lot like the one that we have down below. Um, so this here is a railroad diagram describing what a digit is in this uh, programming language. Um, so you start over here at the left side and you go along and then you hit this point and you have to choose what you're going to do. Um, let's say we wanted the number two, we go up, we go through the two and then we keep going to the end. So this would give us the digit two. Um, we could do a similar thing for any of the other digits. For seven, come along and down and seven. Um, so in Python, we don't look at digits. Um, we have integer would be the smallest number um, because it's such a low level. Um, but when you're looking at syntax, these are really important to know um, and to define. Um, so that's what a digit is. <clears throat> Here it gets a bit more complex. Now we have an integer. Um, so this is like our integers in Python. So we're going to start here. As always, we go across. Then we get to this point and we have to make a choice. Um, and what we're deciding here is if we follow up this path here, we're going to cross this part and that's going to give us a negative. So we're going to have a negative sign in our integer. So it's going to be a negative integer. Um, we go across and now I come along to digit. Um, so digit here is, you'll notice that over here we have our numbers in circles. That means that they're defined here. They're just in our syntax, they're going to look exactly like they look here. So 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, over here we have a box. Now a box is essentially like a function or a variable, it means that it's defined somewhere else. Um, so when we have a box it means it's defined somewhere else. Here we have our digit. So this box here is really referring to something that looks like this. Um, so we come along, we've gone negative, we go across, we get to digit. So we're going to add one of these digits. Let's say we added a 2. Um, then we go through and now we have a choice again. We can decide to follow this loop and come through and choose another digit. Let's say we choose three. And then we can come out and we could choose to go another loop or we could end. We're going to end this time. So we get the integer 23. Um, an alternative that we could have done, I'll do this in a different color, is we could have started here as before, come along and this time not choose to be negative. So it's going to be a positive number. We come along, we can go digit. So let's say we choose eight. And we could go through, we add 7, and we could keep going through another two times, and 3, 1, and then finish. So both of these are examples of possible integers that we could define in this syntax or programming language. Um, this last one is to define some text. Um, and this is more maybe like a variable. Actually, I'll rename it as variable. Variable name. So you'll notice that each of these things here just defines or tells us what we're defining. So here we're defining our variable name. Um, and in, I'm not sure if in Python I assume, um, but other programming languages, you can't start a variable name with a number. You have to start it with a letter. Um, so that's what we're doing here. We're starting here and we have to go through letter. So we're going to have a letter and I haven't defined letter for you. We'll just assume it's any of the alphanumeric letters. Um, or any of the letters in the alphabet, sorry. Um, so let's say we 
choose our letter to be an S. So we're going to make the variable name string1. So we go through here, we get our letter, then we come and we have a decision. We're going to go for a T, so that's another letter. We come down here, we add our T, we come up, we decide to loop, we then come down, we go R, another loop, I, another loop, N, another loop, we get our G, and then we wanted to end it with a 1, so we're going to loop again. This time we're going to go down to digit, we put our 1 in there, and then we exit. So string 1 would be a completely valid uh, variable name. However, something like bar 1 with an underscore in this definition of variable name wouldn't be valid because this little underscore here doesn't appear in letter or in digit. Um, so therefore in this syntax, or if it was a programming language where this was how you define your variable name, you couldn't have variable names like that. Um, Python obviously is a bit more lenient than this variable name is here, um, but hopefully that helps you understand a bit about how railroad diagrams work. Now we're going to quickly look at E, B, and F. Um, and this is a way of writing out um, equivalent things of our railroads. Um, so here we have our digit from before. Now remember our digit, we start here, we go through, we choose a digit, and then we complete. Um, we would write that like this in EBNF. Um, and all that we're doing is we're putting these symbols. And these just mean or. Yeah? So we can have 0, or 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, or 7, or 8, or 9. Um, so digit is going to be one of these letters. Um, so you want to remember that that symbol there, so this symbol means or. Um, digit's very simple to define. Then we have our integer. Um, this one obviously already looks a lot more difficult and complex, um, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Um, so as, as you remember, this part in your integer, you don't have to have a negative sign. Um, and that's what these little box brackets mean. It means you can, but you don't have to. So it's a possibility, or possible, but not required. Are these symbols here. Um, now we have this little minus, so it's going to be you do, you could have a little minus, but you don't have to. Now we have our digits. So this part we get to. We have to pass through digit at least once. So we have digit here by itself. Now these little arrow symbols, these mean again that it's defined somewhere else. So it's like using a square. So it's defined somewhere else. So that means that digit Whatever digit is, is going to be another um, thing which we could divide in E, B, and F, like we did in the previous slide. Um, it, we're just referring to something that's found somewhere else. So we go through our digit, and now we have a choice as before. We can go through the loop and add a digit, or we can end. And so we come to these symbols. So when we have the curly, whoops, we have the curly braces, this means that we have a potential loop. Um, so we have a choice, a choice to loop. So we could continue to add as many of these as we would like to. Um, <clears throat> so here we've got three new symbols. We have our square brackets, which mean that you can, but you don't have to have whatever is inside of them. Um, and it doesn't have to be something like a minus, it could be a digit. So it could say, we could start with a digit, but we don't need to, etc. Um, we have our arrows, which means that this thing is defined elsewhere. Um, so look there um, for more information about it. Um, and here we have our choice, or our loop, or our curly braces. So you can do these things as many times as you want, but you don't need to have one at all. Finally, we have our text. Um, and this one is actually easier, well, pretty much easier. It's using symbols that we've seen before. Um, so, so far we've had 
this symbol means that it's defined elsewhere. We've got that coming up a few times. So it's defined elsewhere. We then have <clears throat> these curly braces means that we're going to loop over this or possibly loop over this. So we could have this digit letter thing, but we don't have to. And then finally we have this one here and that means or. So if we then think about what this is actually saying, it says that text, for us to have something called text, it has to start with a letter. And the letter is defined somewhere else, but it has to just start with a letter. Then it can include any number of digits or letters. Any number of digits or letters. So for our text, we could have, we start, have to start with a letter. We could have L. Then we go through. We could have E as another letter. Um, we could go through, loop again, or we could have a number, one or we could have another letter F, or we could have another number digit seven, um, and you can keep going, or you could just stop there. Um, so that's an example of how text works. Um, I hope that makes sense. Now this is just a quick summary of what we've been looking at. So we'll start with loop. In a railroad diagram, we have a normal sequence left to right, um, and then a loop, we loop back on ourselves. In EBNF, we're gonna see those curly braces. Now, you can go through a loop, but you don't have to. Um, defined elsewhere, a railroad diagram is going to be a box. EBNF, we have our pointy um, bracket shapes there. Um, so that means that it's defined somewhere else. Used as is, in a railroad diagram, we have a circle. And then we could have, say, plus, and then it's going to be a plus in a thing. I better cross that out so it doesn't confuse you. Um, in EBNF, it'd just be text. Um, I won't draw anything there. A choice in Railroad is just a branch in our path um, with something on each end. In EBNF, a choice is just the straight line up and down. Um, an optional in our Railroad diagram would be something like this. And that could be a circle or a square at the top. Uh, we'll just put that for now. Um, so you go, you could um, go up, but you don't have to. You could go just across. And in the EBNF, you have your square brackets. So you could, but don't have to do the things in there. I hope that has helped you understand uh, EBNF and railroad diagrams. Um, they're really important things to know. They do come up in... Um, the HSC and things like that. Um, we will look at them again in the future. Please do let me know if you have any questions um, and otherwise all the best for the activities related to this video. Thanks for watching.